Okay, Frank, take it away. Okay, so I just want to give everyone here a brief overview of what we've been doing on the PAL platform, what we believe is important and uh, what is coming next. Uh, Luca already talked about it. So we started in 2013 when Luca was first appointed uh, to ETH. And what he wanted to do was work on uh, new energy efficient architectures. So keywords that we had was, you know, parallel processing, near threshold operation, energy efficiency. And uh, the name was born like that. And we also like Pulp Fiction. And uh, we are a fairly large group for a university. I mean, uh, depends on how you count it. We are about 60 people. About 40 of them are in Zurich, 20 or so are in Bologna. And uh, it's not only IC designers or HDL coders. So we have people that work on technology, IC design, architecture, programming, applications, everything. Uh, by the end of this month, we will have taped out 34 chips. Uh, a few of the pictures are still missing, but you can see also uh, the distribution. So we have a lot of experience in manufacturing and testing chips. And uh, people have been also like this, and they collaborated with us on a number of things. From the first day, we actually said we want to be working on open source. So uh, our goal was to release everything that we could uh, as open source from the beginning. It wasn't so easy, so I was very naive, or we were all very naive when we were first started and just think, let's put it on the internet and you know, it will work. Um, most of you have been involved in open source uh, software or hardware, you know that there is actually plenty of things to be done. And uh, there are still some discussions on what can be released. If uh, those of you who are around after the official RISC V event during the week of open source hardware, we'll be having uh, discussions on Thursday about uh, licensing issues, uh, IP, what can be distributed, what not. And uh, we've been, from the beginning, using a permissive uh, uh, license, open source license called SolderPad uh, since the beginning. Our first open source release took about three years to come out. So that was Palpino. It's a simple 32-bit microcontroller, which is using a 32-bit RISC 5 core. And as of now, 2019, we have released uh, multiple single core platforms. So Palpino, the simple one, Palpissimo, the better one. And uh, we have cluster-based multi-core architectures. There is one, uh, the Hero heterogeneous architecture, the Open Pulp. Uh, you all heard about the Open Python and Ariane project. And uh, these are the platforms, but there is also a lot of things that go into it as a building block. So cores, uh, peripherals, accelerators, and interconnect solutions that they have also uh, released as open source. So a lot of people come and ask, why do, do you do this? And for us, we see this as a necessity. It's not um, something we do um, because we are like these wonderful people, but we see some real value in it. And uh, the most important one, which has been already also mentioned by Ted, it allows us to collaborate more easily with, uh, with our partners. So this is both with academia and industry. And um, if you think about it, if, uh, what you are, if you're setting up a cooperation and your background and your foreground is going to be open source, and you agree that you're going to be sharing this with the entire world, uh, some of the agreements become very simple. Um, we can work with more people. We can start projects faster. And uh, the most important thing is also, if we work with some group in some project, later on, we can use this, what we have developed as part of this project, in other projects as well. So this adds real value. Uh, we wanted to leverage the community, so we've all been there. We wanted to design our own processor, design your own tools, design, and after a while, you don't have the, uh, you don't have the energy to do this. So by, uh, by being part of the open source hardware community, we, would, uh, we envisioned that we could leverage it, and we do it to a great extent. Uh, we are not doing everything. We try to use as much as possible from other things. Uh, so we are from the academia. Uh, and uh, this thing probably doesn't come up in uh, industry so often. Uh, the open source hardware brings a new dimension, according to me at least, uh, to, to the academia because it allows you to do fair benchmarking. Whenever I release some numbers about some chip that I have made, a lot of people can just go download and verify that whatever I said actually matches. They can try it on their own technology with their own tools and they can see. And, 
it will force us and also the others after a while to release numbers that are more accurate and uh, are more useful for the uh, population in general. And uh, obviously, there has been a lot of talk. Uh, almost half of the discussions we have are on projects relating to security and safety. There are certain advantages of having open source hardware in projects that involve these. Now, I just briefly want to touch upon three different projects that we had that resulted in chips. The first one is Mr. Wolf, around 2018. This is a TSMC 40 LP chip. It's very similar, actually, in content uh, to the uh, product of Green Waves, uh, the GAP-8. It's not a coincidence because the entire project is actually open source available, open pulp. And, uh, but the other, in the other part of this is uh, we, we are using at the, uh, top of the, uh, at the top of the uh, chip there, you have power converters, you have LDOs, you have real-time clocks, you have uh, all these analog IP that we were able to take from Dolphin integration. It's a win-win for both uh, groups. So we get to use state-of-the-art IP for our own project. It's something that we are not interested in developing or do not really have the uh, means to do so. And on the other side, the IP developing company uh, gets to uh, have a demonstrator with the complete system running in one place. The other one is uh, Arnold. This is a uh, Global Foundry 22 uh, chip. Just came back. It's not a product. It's a demonstrator. And it's a cooperation with Quick Logic. And uh, there is a Palpissimo system. So it's a 32-bit microcontroller with all bells and whistles. And an embedded FPGA uh, running in the same chip. They are connected through uh, our... Uh, they share the same memory. They, they can communicate. They can, the processor can program the EFPGA on the fly, et cetera, et cetera. The interesting part for me is that this entire thing from idea to chip took about one year to complete. We had the uh, silicon back in uh, almost exactly a year since we first met at a, a Global Foundries conference. Uh, Mao and Brian were there. I was attending. It just you know, started discussing. And it's an amazingly fast turnaround time. It wouldn't have been possible if you weren't using open source, if you were to start um, negotiations with our uh, individual uh, law departments until you find some agreement. So the third one I want to show is Cosmodrome. Uh, this one is a test chip. It has two different Ariane cores. Uh, that's a 64-bit RIS-5 core implemented with a number of peripherals. It's a cooperation with Global Foundries, and they found it that it's interesting to work with us because in the end, they are going to get a de demo vehicle, a demonstrator that um, they, can, uh, they can easily port. They can bring it to their customers because the source code for whatever was manufactured is actually open source available, so they have no limitations in sharing it. And for us, obviously, it is very good to have a partner that wants to uh, work with us doing uh, modern technologies. And um, what was also very interesting for us, so this is really an interesting thing. This is actually um, a colleague of us that we got the box, we unboxed it, and there it was. It was one of our cores in an open ISA org uh, Vega board, and we literally had no idea that this was being done. Uh, it was an open source project, so they took the core, they put it in the board, and we just received the boxes. It was excellent. I mean, it was one of the uh, nicest things that we have seen. If you're in the academia, this doesn't happen to you very often. So, you know, we had tears in our eyes. And uh, I have to also mention uh, there Alex the Bear is holding the um, Gopuino board. Uh, this is also from the... Um, uh, it's, a, it's a board you can buy, you can play with, and, and its core of it is the technology that we have developed here. But as a university, our goal is actually research. We want to build interesting things like this, and we want to develop new architectures, do things differently, or want to investigate ideas, can we do it this way, can we do it that way, and we rely on open source cores. But it's not our core business to develop these cores. Our business is we want to research new ways, architectures, systems that do things differently. And um, we realize that you need a lot of technical support, documentation, verification, user support. We try to, I mean, maybe some of you have already tried our forums, tried posting things, and you got upset because we are not answering fast enough. And um, verification is something that we need to work. 
but this is not easy to do in an ac academic environment. So we've been talking with people, and what happened in the recent uh, times is, first of all, uh, micro or zero risky is now uh, has been rebranded. It's called Ibex. Ibex is a uh, mountain goat, uh, popular in Switzerland, and low risk is. Uh, uh, has agreed to maintain micro and zero risky. They have an interest because they, are, they have a project they are working on, they need a core, and they promise to take good care of it. And we are uh, very happy that, that it has found a home. You know, if you are parents and your children make their own life, you are actually really happy about that. Uh, this doesn't mean that we will stop working on it. We will be working on it as a contributor as well, and we'll continue to do it both at Zurich and University of Bologna. Uh, today and last week, there was also the news about the Open Hardware Group uh, from uh, Rick. And uh, Zurich, uh, ETH Zurich is also a founding member of the Open Hardware Group. And uh, in the future, or as soon as the Open Hardware Group is, uh, sets up its operations, we will also uh, have the Risky and Ariana cores uh, maintained as part of the uh, core V. And um, we will continue to work as contributors in this thing. But for us, the good news is obviously that we will have professional support for things we do not have so much bandwidth in and not so much experience in, so we will get this help. So we are very excited about the future of pulp. Our cores have found homes that will take excellent care of them, or this is what we hope. Uh, micro zero risk is being maintained by low risk is Ibex. Risky and Ariane will be maintained as part of Corby project uh, uh, of Open Hardware Group. And the support, this support will result in better cores. And it will allow us to concentrate on what we do the best. So we want to develop new and efficient architectures using the building blocks we have. We already are working on ideas. We are very excited about it. So stay tuned. I hope in a year we'll be able to present new results. And finally, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them.